Son of a... In the last video, we talked about orientation. In this video, we're hitting the road for the first time. So, these are the ins and outs, these are the pitfalls, and these are the things the recruiter didn't tell you about. So, let's get started so you can get started. In reality, your training period is probably gonna last between two weeks and a month. And you'll most likely be out that whole entire time. Unless you have a family emergency or something happens and you need to go home and take care of some business. Or, if it's a good company, they might swing you by the house for a weekend or something like that. A lot of companies are a lot more accommodating than you would realize. But, with the trainer, they're going to, uh, depending on the company, it's going to be kind of a rough time. It's going to be a learning time. There's a big learning curve. The problem with a lot of these truck stop schools today, when they teach drivers how to drive trucks, they're not teaching drivers how to drive. They're teaching drivers how to pass the test. So, now that you're out with a trainer, it's time for you to absorb as much knowledge as you can about this job. It's going to be tough. But, get through it, learn the ins and outs, it's going to be rewarding also. So. Every company has their own orientation and they have their own rules and their own training procedure and you're going to get a handbook. Um, every company has it. You're going to know what they want you. For the most part, everything you need to do the job effectively will be written in that book for the most part. We're not going to talk about that. When you get out in your truck, it's going to be stressful. You're, but that's why I said during your training period, absorb as much information as knowledge as you can because you're going to need it so once you leave your uh your uh, training truck and you're on your own you got your semi truck that's when your probation period starts so you got 90 days it's going to be stressful there's going to be bumps along the way there's going to be things that you need to know to make your life on the road a whole lot easier and that's kind of where we're going with this video. So, let's talk about stress. I bring up stress because this job is a whole lot more difficult than people realize. I can't tell you how many people I've trained who thought literally that this was going to be easy money, easy big money. They were going to be able to just sit on their butt all day and all you do is drive a truck. It's work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of stress. There's a lot to know. But the secret is managing your stress properly. You know, you got to learn how to control your anger. This job, if you're not ready, it'll bite you. So you need to learn how to control your anger. But in controlling your anger, you need to learn how to control your stress. People are going to cut you off. People are going to do stupid things around you. People are going, you're going to see accidents. You're going to get blocked in at truck stops. You're going to get abused by other truck drivers. It comes with the territory. You're going to have to deal with dispatch on your own, breakdown on your own, uh, the DOT on your own. And there's a procedure for dealing with all of that in that manual. But that manual is just a guideline. It's what the company expects, but a lot of the stuff that you're going to have to do, you're going to have to improvise. It's, you're going to have to come up with it on the go. So it's important to learn how to manage your stress because it'll get you. Now truck stops are an interesting place. They provide fuel, they provide food, showers, laundry, depending on where you're at. They have a whole host of services which are very beneficial to our job. They help make the job easier. So, you know, be professional. Don't trash the place. Don't crap on the pavement. Don't throw pee bottles in the parking lot. Dispose of your trash properly. But all that aside, there's a lot of other things that happen in truck stops that you need to be leery of. Uh, Chances are, once you're through the orientation period, you're going to have a basic idea how to fuel, 
cash advances, stuff like that. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the seedier side of truck stops and things you need to watch out for. We're going to start off talking about panhandlers and grifters. They're everywhere. They're begging for money. They're the guys on the side of the road. They're the guys in the truck stop saying that they're stranded. Being compassionate is a human thing. It's not a bad thing to have compassion. The problem with these people is that if you start hitting the same truck stops, you're going to see them out every day. You're going to see them transferring around. You're going to see a lot of the same grifters working a corner. You're going to see a lot of the same grifters and panhandlers working the truck stops. They had one guy in Kansas City who had been stranded needing $27 for a bus ticket. He's been stranded there for uh, for about two years now. Uh, and that was th three years ago. And we also ran into him at the Flying J. He's been stranded there too. So you're going to learn real quick that you're just wasting your money. I hate to say that. Being compassionate is a wonderful thing. But these people here... They're, they're out to take. So be very mindful of that. And there's another kind of guy out here. There you're going to have guys coming to sell you all sorts of things. You're going to have guys trying to sell you tablets. You're going to have guys try to sell you television sets. Guy I know had a buddy who bought a television set. Brand new box, foam, everything. Took it out, it was an oven door. Some guy spent 200 bucks on an oven door. Uh tablets, all sorts of things. I got something I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how slick they are. And I got it back here. <laughs> I got it off a panhandler. I'll show it to you. It's funny. This is what they do. The guy said it was a brand new tablet. Had this in it. Had it all wrapped up. Had it very professionally sealed. What this is, is one of the scams. Watch this. Since it's an Apple iPad. He took a Best Buy ad and photocopied it at Kinko's. Do you know what this is? This is a busted Samsung tablet he pulled out of the trash. I thought it was really funny. So, these are scams people use. Don't fall for them. You know, I, I, I've kept this around because I thought it was really, really funny. But this was a scam somebody used. So... If you look at it right off the top when it's wrapped, the way it's wrapped and all that, man, you're convinced it's the real deal. These guys are good. So, don't fall for it. Don't buy anything you can't see. Guys are selling things on the radio all the time. They're selling CBs. They're selling all sorts of things. 99.9998% of it is just a scam to take your money. So, be mindful of that. Now, Speaking of other scams, we're going to talk about something. <laughs> we're going to talk about the next scam. <laughs> this scam artist is more dangerous than all the rest. This one takes more than just your money. And that's the lot lizard. The lady of the night. The hooker. Don't. Don't. If it's too good to be true and she's got all your teeth, chances are you're going away in handcuffs. Aside from that, they're not out here. This is not Smoking the Bandit. This is not Convoy. This is not one of those stupid trucking movies from the 70s. They don't look like that. These are meth head whores who are out to take your money and steal everything they can out of your truck. They will steal your billfold. They will steal everything. They don't care. Do not let them in your truck. Do not let them on your truck. Just a word of advice. You don't want anything to do with these. And eventually, you're going to figure out where to go where they're not. Because, trust me, you don't want the same cracked out whore beating on your truck every hour and a half wanting to know if you have company. These are not people you should associate with. So, they, it's bad news. On top of that, chances are you're going to get something that Ajax won't wash off. You don't want nothing to do with this. So, little word to the wise.
stay clean out here because it's a dangerous world and these women they're just yeah like I said you can be compassionate they're not your friend they're not interested in being your friend they don't like you they're out to take there's been a lot of truck drivers killed by letting hookers in the truck I uh, saw a guy in Dallas he was running back and forth I said what you doing he says damn woman stole my wallet he had a hooker in his truck I said well you shouldn't have let her near your pants I was gonna help him look and then I saw he had a wedding ring and then I decided he was a scumbag so I figured he earned it so word to the wise ladies of the night have nothing to do with them just stay away because like I said if they have all their teeth they're a cop I brought up accidents a minute ago because you're gonna have one. And I'm not necessarily mean you're gonna T-bone a bus full of nuns or anything like that. You're gonna run over a post, you're gonna hit a rock, you might damage a bumper, rip some mud flaps off. Inconvenient things are gonna happen. That's part of the learning experience. If you're with a good company, they understand that. As long as you're not doing any major damage and you're not constantly late on your loads, they're going to be a little more forgiving as long as you're straight up front and you know now if you're habitually tearing up their equipment they're going to have a problem with that but you're going to flatten a tire you're going to rip a bumper off you're going to do all of these things we all have done these things i've been doing this 19 years uh this last summer i destroyed two tires running over a post I was busy looking at something when I should have been looking at something else, trying to get around a corner in a truck stop. You know, I had to buy a new wheel for the trailer. I had to, uh, luckily, I didn't have to buy a new tire, new wheel hub. That whole ordeal cost me about six, seven hundred dollars. Accidents happen, but if you're prepared and you have a good mind, be mindful of what you're doing. You can avoid a lot of accidents if you're paying attention. Had I uh, been paying attention. I would have avoided the accident. So, just keep your wits about you, mind what you're doing, and just accept the fact that you're going to have a few bumps and bruises along the way. It happens to everybody. It's not the end of the world. So, you know, it's just, and with the cameras in the trucks now, and all the sensors and everything going on, even if it's, even if they want to say it's your fault, you got a camera. Chances are it's not going to be. You're new. They're going to cut you some breaks. Just don't allow yourself to be shaken with inconvenient things. You're going to have things happen. Ripping mud flaps off, like I said, flattening tires. Just keep your wits about you. Be very straight and honest with your employer about what happened. They like that. You might get in a little bit of trouble, but I'll tell you what. You'll get in a whole lot more trouble if they found out you damaged stuff and tried to hide it. Do not hide damage. So, just a little tip to the wise. Now, when it comes to pay, I know what the recruiter told you. You know what the recruiter told you. The reality will be in your bank account. It's going to be a little tight. Try to stay away from the cash advances. Be very thrifty. You know, you have to eat. You got to do laundry. You got to take showers. You're going to figure out ways to do this. You're going to use your fuel points and your fuel receipts. Your, uh, you know, your little loves cards like these little fuel saver cars and whatnot, you're going to learn how to use those properly to get things you need and save a little money out here because your paychecks are going to be small. Now, if you start off in a training truck and they're playing you a flat rate, it's going to be tough for a little while. I mean, if you got to send that money home, you know, it's going to be tight. You know, four, 400 bucks a week is pretty tight. But, once you're out of your training period and all that, the pay does get better. It doesn't mean it's going to be this way forever. When I started driving, I was making 23 cents a mile. When I quit being a company driver, I was making 46 cents a mile. But what was weird was I was making the most money on my paychecks when I was making 32 cents a mile, so I haven't quite figured that one out yet. But, uh... It's not, the pay's not going to suck forever. Now, 
if you're at it six months to a year and it's getting worse and worse and worse, maybe it is time for you to get out. But if you're getting, you know, a penny every quarter or a penny every six months, you know, penny doesn't sound like much, but I'll tell you what, at the end of the year, it really adds up. So just keep your wits about you, learn how to budget your money, and just remember that the first year the pay is going to suck, but it's not going to suck forever. So if you can hang on, you'll do all right. You know, the first year I was out here, I think I made, what, maybe 20 grand. The last year as a company driver, I made 61 as a company driver. And the funny thing is, we got company drivers where I'm at now, guys making 80. You can make money being a company driver, you know. So just, just remember that if you're willing to work and you're willing to hang on and you're willing to do the hard things here, the money will come. Now, like I said, if... <laughs> six, eight months and you're not seeing a raises and they're him hawing and they're doing all that, maybe it's time for you to go. But if not, just remember, first year is going to be kind of tight, probably the first six months, but you'll get your legs under you, you'll figure out how it works, and it's going to be all right. In this line of work, you're going to deal with a lot of customers. It's very, very vitally important to be professional. You getting mad and forcing your hand is not going to make them work any harder. In fact, it might piss them off and they might slow down. Or they might call your company. Or they might ban you from the property. You can't get mad. You have to let it go. You need to be professional because these customers aren't going to change. They deal with a hundred of you a day. They are oblivious. They don't care. They are completely numb to your bellyache. You got to be professional and dealing with customers is like that. I've gotten unloaded early more times just being friendly and nice and joking with them. Just going in a day early and saying, hey, you know, I'm here a little early. Uh, is there a place to park around here or anything or, or do you want it? I mean, I'm here if you want it. If not, I'll bust back to the truck stop and I'll catch you in the morning. That, just saying those lines just like that has gotten me unloaded early more times than I can shake a stick at. Because a lot of times, especially with a lot of these smaller di distributors, if you're there early enough, they don't have to deal with you the next day. You free up time for other things that they need to do. So be professional, don't yell, don't curse, don't get mad, and you know, just bite your tongue. There's going to be a lot of tongue biting. Now, when you're dealing with dispatch, you're going to be doing the same thing because they control your destiny. So just be professional. If you have a problem with dispatch, they have a boss. If you're not getting it dealt with, there is a proper order of things that you have to do. If the customer is not going to unload you or the customer is giving you crap, don't go back on the customer. You need to call your company and have them deal with it at a corporate level. It's very important. And it will get you a lot better results in the long run. Just a little word of advice. Trust me, I've been down this road. It's better to let the company deal with it than try to deal with it head on yourself. Basically, the first year or two are going to be bumps. You're not a professional yet. You don't know what you're doing. It's going to be tough. And there's no way around it. There's no easy way. There is no magic solution on how to make this easy. There's no magical formula. You'll go to the same place four times and do it differently all four times. You just have to roll with it. I had a student one time who he just had to put everything into a formula and everything in a box. And he was so OCD. I'm surprised he made He turned into a good truck driver, but he had to learn how to correct that you just it isn't what it seems you, you can't put things in a box and you have to learn how to roll with it you know I well especially with this COVID stuff going on right now everything's changing again you know I go to oh take for instance 
there's a distribution center I go to outside of Indianapolis. She go there all the time. In about the last six months, we've had four to five different changes. They want something done each time. There's no hard and fast rule for anything. Just be ready to be fluid. Trucking changes constantly. So you need to be ready to change with it if you're going to be good at it. So just roll with the changes, learn the craft, learn the industry, and learn the lifestyle. If you look at this as a 9 to 5 job, you're going to hate every minute of it. If you embrace the lifestyle and accept it for what it is, it can be a lot of fun. So just learn about it and have fun, you know. So. Here's a synopsis. Long and short, your first couple of years is going to be really tough. Your first year especially. If you can make it past the first year, man, you're going to have a great time. Most people end their trucking career after six months. The turnover in this industry is horrible because people get lied to, people get disappointed, people get discouraged, and they think it's going to be this way all the time. It doesn't have to be this way all the time. It's not going to be this way all the time. You just have to work through a few bumps. And after your first year, or even after your second year, if you decide that this is not what you want to do, or this is not the company you want to be with, there's, I mean, I, I can look outside here. I'm in Oklahoma City at the J right now, and I can see 15 different companies just out my windshield. There's all sorts of things that you can do and all sorts of companies that you can go work for. You know, if you want to get your license, get some experience on the road and go drive local, lots of guys do that. I mean, there's a lot of guys that do that. And it works out for them. And this can work out for you too. So just take the advice that I've given you for what it is, take it with a grain of salt, weigh it, make it work for you, make it your own. There's a lot of things I said that you're gonna be like, nah, I get where he's coming, but that's not working for me. But if I do it this way, it will. Then do it that way. I'm just giving you some rules and some advice that I've learned over the last 19 years out here on the road. It's tough. And I want you guys to be successful. You know, uh, I was going to talk a little bit about leasing a truck and buying a truck. That's where some of the stress comes in. I've talked about that at nauseum. Until you get a year or two in, don't do that. Learn the business, learn the craft. There's an art to this. And there's a lot of people out there that once they get past these initial humps, you're gonna do well. They're gonna like it. You're gonna realize that there's a lot of cool places and you're gonna realize that this is better than sitting in a cubicle, which I've done. This is better than working on a factory floor, which I've done. This is better than working with bosses over your shoulders, which has happened. You know, there is a lot of independence out here. Sure, there's a lot of monitoring, e-logs, this, that, and the other thing. But you have an advantage. You're starting off new, and all this will be the norm, and you're going to get comfortable and figure out a way to make all of this work for you. So, I hope this has been helpful. There's not a whole lot to this video. I just want people to know that it doesn't have to stay this way forever. The first year's gonna suck, but man, is it gonna get better. So, just give it some time, and I want people to know that it's, like I said, it's not gonna be this way forever. You can be a success in this. It's taken me a few years. It's not overnight. The pay starting off is gonna suck, but it gets better. So, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys out here on the road soon.